you guys are idiots that you're still doing it this way. I've never actually had you know, a real job. An ERP and then, you know, holy crap, the first time you learn about an ERP, you're like, what is this really? It's like, <laughs> you were probably just, you know, finger in the air gifts. Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquette. Today we have Rohit on the call and Rohit's got a really great background uh, coming on the podcast today. He's an, Am uh, an ex-Amazon seller. Uh, biggest brand was doing $30 million in revenue and you've had five successful exits. And now you founded this insurance company um, for e-commerce sellers called Assureful. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Rohit. We're excited to learn about how you accomplish these things and, and what you got going on now. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to kick it to you and uh, let you tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks for having me, Nick. So um, my background, again, like you said, uh, five e-commerce brands started on Amazon in 2013, uh, predominantly supplements, uh, sold the first brand uh, which was doing 30 million a year on Amazon uh, to private equity in uh, 2020. Uh, and then two other brands in 2021 to Aggregator. Glad I caught that wave. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then um, another two in 2022. Um, you said five successful exits. There are four successful exits and an exit, right? Which wasn't so All right, successful, keeping it real. I like it. Keeping it real. Yeah, my fault on that one. Was that your first exit? What, where no. in line did the uh, that fall? So that was the last exit. The okay. last exit, there was fatigue. Do you know when you just get fatigued doing it, right? So there was fatigue yes. and I just wanted to get rid of it. And okay. uh, somebody else said that they would take it off me for pretty much nothing. So I said, yeah, sure, you know. Cool okay. So I don't count it, it as a okay. successful exit because I didn't make okay. much money or I may make it in the future, but uh, today, yeah, four successful exits. Okay. Well, we'll have to try and dig into that a little later in the podcast, see what lessons you have uh, to share. Sure. Uh, so now, so, so now you, you, you've gone away from Amazon and you're the CEO and founder of Assureful, which sure. I I got introduced to you guys at the MDS Connect event in Innovate. Uh, Mike and Keaton were there, and they were telling me a little bit about how you guys do things. It reminded me of some of the newer like financing options, like a Brex. You know, these companies that uh, hook up to your Amazon account, your Shopify store, they see your revenue. And they say, hey, we'll give you X amount of money uh, based on what we're seeing in there. And it kind of changes like month to month, maybe even day to day. Um, and it sounds like you guys have kind of adopted something similar, but in the insurance. Something similar. So, sure. So, something similar. So, um, well, let me just back up with the genesis, right? So, in 2018, uh, with one of my brands, we were projecting $18 million in sales, right? Um now, every single insurance company in the world asks you to project your sale. And I'm sure you've bought insurance and uh, the MDS members have bought insurance and the, the annoying brokers at the insurance company are saying, what do you project you're going to do the next 12 month, months? Well, I really don't know. You know, I mean, it, yeah. could, it could be really good and it could be, you know, really bad. But I told the insurance company 18 million and... Um, that year, we had a suspension event happen on Amazon for alleged review manipulation, which, anyway, that's another story. Um, so the revenue for the year was actually nine million for that one brand. It really, you know, messed with me. Uh, at this point, we were paying $75,000 annually in advance to the insurance company for insurance premiums. And so I go to the insurer and I say, hey, Guys, I haven't done 18 million in sales. I've done nine. Uh, can I get a refund, please? Right? And they said, well, it's not our fault. You didn't hit your projections. No refund. So I said, well, what if I projected 5 million in sales and I did nine? And they said, yeah. well, beyond that, your projection, everything is uninsured. So the industry <laughs> was designed to essentially 
overcharge you and price gouge, right? Um, which just felt so unfair. So, yeah. um, and you know, going back to 2018, I said, okay, this year I project I'll do 10 million in sales. Granted, we did 26 million that year, but I said, we're going to do 10 million in sales. And they said, okay, 75,000 in premium. And I said, how does that make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. And so I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this better than you, right? And uh, fortunately, I had some uh, exits, which allowed me to bootstrap uh, the company. And it was a substantial learning curve because we didn't want to be insurance brokers, right? There's, right. there's loads of insurance brokers out, but we didn't want to be that. We wanted to be the people making the decision on insurance. Um, so how do you do that, right? Especially as an e-commerce guy, how do you get from here to there? And so um, I had to build a team, right? Uh, insurance experts. Uh, got a co-founder who was on the board of this big French insurance company. Um, and we said, let's take the hardest problem to do. Private label, made in China, baby products sold in the US on Amazon. That is the hardest thing to get insurance for. Uh, okay. And so we said, let's take that as an example and try and build an insurance product around that. Right, because everything else then is easy to do if you can get that done, right? Um, and so, but then we said we're not going to do this this bogus project into the future uh, nonsense that everybody else is doing. So we created you know these connections into your Amazon account, and we're the only people in the world looking at your actual sales in the last thirty days. So at a shortfall. We look at the last 30 days of real sales and it could be Amazon, Shopify, you know, even if you're selling through wholesale channels, Target, um, Home Depot, et cetera, right? It doesn't matter where you're selling. We'll cover a hundred percent of your sales based on your actual sales, right? And so that was a huge learning curve, uh, not just for us to break into the insurance industry, and get validation, but also to um, you know, explain how this product is going to work to our capacity providers at Lloyd's of London. So we're a part of Lloyd's of London. We're co-holders of Lloyd's. So every policy that we issue is, you know, even though it says a shortfall on the top, it's backed 100% by Lloyd's of London. So okay. getting that sort of understanding and explaining it to them took another two years, right? It's really hard because insurance never looks at the past. It looks at the future, but we're looking at the past. So yeah. So that was a, a big differentiator. So Okay. Yeah. And also, you know, there was a thing on underwriting where every insurer looks at about 40 different categories for consumer products. Uh, and then they always price based on the highest, well, 80th percentile of risk within that category. So think of something okay. like you're selling motorcycle helmets, right? Uh, and somebody else is selling, you know, one of those plastic sheets that cover the motorcycle from the elements, right? Both of those things insurers classify as automotive accessories. And so the plastic okay. sheet, even though it's super low risk, is priced the same way as the motorcycle helmet is, right? Okay. And therefore, insurance becomes really expensive, right? For small businesses. Yep. So this is what we were trying to fix. You know, pricing was an issue. The stupid projection was an issue. The brokers were lying. A lot of the brokers were lying, right? Amazon only requires a million dollars in insurance. Brokers are saying, oh, Donna, you need five, you need 10 million, because they get tons yeah. of commission by upselling you on stuff. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and as e-commerce business, we're, we're, we just trust, you know, these third party brokers saying that, oh, okay, they probably have my best interest at heart, which they don't. They're yeah. You know, a yeah. lot of the time, many of them are good, but a lot of the time, yeah. 
So yeah, that's sort of a, a quick, quick background. Nice. I like it, man. So, I mean, I think that's a great recipe for, you know, something that could really take off if you guys are doing things differently and that results in, you know, more, a more fair pricing structure and better pricing because you're identifying, you know, the helmet versus the, the, uh, motorcycle cover up. Um, you know, that, that's amazing, man. So I'm excited that you guys are out here. It's always exciting to see, a business in an industry doing things drastically different and just being like, Hey, you guys are idiots that you're still doing it this way. Uh, we have like technology now and stuff. So, you know, we're going to do things differently. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do it better. Yeah. All Um, the technology. I mean, how do we, uh, you know, accurately categorize consumer products? So we're using a ton of gen AI. We're categorizing against 33,000 product categories. Whereas other insurers are doing 30 or 40 categories, okay. which allows okay. us then to cover 95% of products sold on Amazon. Whereas everybody else, all the other insurers are doing maybe 30 to 40% of products, right? Yeah. Because you yeah. don't want an importer product. You know, they're like, Ooh, it's made in China. Everything is made in China. I mean, come on. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but then the other insurer, this is what we're trying to, you know, get past, right? The, the, yeah. the, the hegemony yeah. of the insurance companies bullying e-commerce businesses. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, um, you know, I, I think it's great. I really enjoyed meeting um, Mike and Keaton at the event. They seemed like great guys and it Fuck. just seemed like a great product to sell. Like, that's what I thought when I was there. I was like, man, if I was working for this company, like it would be such an easy sell. For me, because I would like really believe in it. It sounds, you know, just like a great thing to be doing. And um, it's and mandatory. Then... Amazon requires it. Walmart.com requires it. It's a mandatory yeah. product. You have to buy it when you cross ten thousand dollars in one month. You have to buy it. Yeah. So why buy a crappy product from someone who doesn't understand your business? I just don't get it. Right. A yeah. more expensive yeah. product. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks for telling us a little bit about how a Sureful came to be. Um, but man, uh, Rohit, I'm interested like how you came to be who you are today. Like you've you've had all the these exits, this thirty million dollar business. Um, you know, ha- have you always been an entrepreneur? Did you go to college and get a traditional education or you know, a family of entrepreneurs? Let's let's learn a little bit about uh, the backstory. Sure. So um Family of entrepreneurs, right? Well, converted okay. entrepreneurs. My my dad worked for somebody for thirty years, and one day just left and started his own thing. Um, awesome. And that was sort of in I think nineteen ninety five or something. So I was still a, a kid, but um, and then you know he did his. And own you were thing. in England? No, uh, back then I was in Dubai. So we Dubai. Were, we, okay. we used to live in Dubai back then, and um, was was Dubai like. Was it like it is now? No, it was just a pile of sand, right? In the just early, in, in the early nineties, okay. it was just a massive pile of sand. Um, that's but wild. That's, okay, but you know, uh, was born and raised there, right in Dubai. So going back to wow. the mid eighties, I was in the pile of sand, right? Uh, it was a really great place to grow up because uh, it was you know really close knit community back then. It wasn't this global international metropolis um and then after that i went off to boarding school when i was 11 and uh, i went to school in india and uh, then after that i studied law um and after studying law i started my first business which was uh, a legal outsourcing company while i was at law school and so okay uh, you know i've kind of always i've never actually had you know, real job as such, but yeah. uh, always had, you know, business and ventures, things that excited me. I would go and do it. Um, and then um, there's some friends of mine back in 2013. They said, hey, you know, we're, we're doing this thing on Amazon. And I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. You know, let's let's go for it. And uh, we started working on this thing together. And, you know, each of us put in barely anything, five grand or something. And, in a couple of years, we were doing twenty million and thirty million. Wow! Um, yeah, and then fortunately, 
managed to sell that thing in 2020 to a private equity okay. firm. And uh, yeah, so that was their kind of first exit. Dude, that's so cool. Do you ever go back to Dubai and just like flex on everyone? Like, man, y'all don't even know about this place. I've been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I left in 95, right? So I was still a, okay. a, a kid. Uh, but then I, even though my family was there, I was in boarding school in India. So, um, I mean, I would just go back for, for, you know, holidays. Right. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't had the opportunity to flex on anyone, but I'm one of okay. the OGs, right? Not my yet. My dad right, is one of yeah. the OGs. He's been there. You got to hold that card, man. You got to hold sure. that close to the chest, man. Sure. <laughs> I mean, he's That's been there for cool. the 60s, right? My dad. Yeah. So. Yeah, he is a true OG. He used to sit down right. with the current shape's dad and have tea on the side of the road. Right? That was Amazing. the thing that they used to do in the sixties yeah. and seventies. That's wild. That's wild, man. That's uh that's a cool backstory. Um yeah. what was your thing in the business that you did really well, like um in, in the Amazon business? Or did you do a lot of outsourcing? You said you had an outsourcing company. Sure. So yeah, I'm wondering, like, what was your focus in, in the business, your well, role? My role in the business was predominantly tax, finance, all the money, um, you know, operations to a certain extent. Uh, I was group CFO, right? Okay. Uh, and so um, my co-founder, Lucas, who I think was an MDS member at the time um, as well. Okay. So... And uh, he was CEO and I was CFO and uh, yeah, then, you know, all the legal and selling of these things, contracts, taxes, a lot. Cool stuff. Nice. Nice. Did you guys use a, um, I'm thinking of some of the stuff we're going through now in our business. Cause we've got a uh, holdings company and a couple, um, you know, other uh, companies with their own Amazon accounts. Sure. Um, you know, people talk about like using, an ERP and then, yes. you know, holy crap, the first time you learn about an ERP, you're like, what is this really? It's so that like, was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was me. Did you uh, use any of that stuff? Yeah, we uh, did a okay. NetSuite implementation in 2018, actually. So okay. five years into the business, we did NetSuite, which was an extremely expensive thing. Well, yeah. extremely expensive. It depends. It's all relative, right? But I think it was yeah. 180K plus implementation plus this plus. It was expensive, according to Jeez. me. Um, and, but then it helped a lot with demand planning and um, okay. seasonality and figuring that out. These days, you can just use OpenAI, right? For a lot of this stuff. But, you know, in 2018, it's, uh, it was, um, yeah, we did the ERP system. Dang, that's wild. So, are you have you used? Um, yeah, because we're now you got me interested. Now I'm like, all right, how do I do this with Chat GPT? Because yeah, it's all because you. And then when you're looking at these ERPs, you've got some that are like free. Yeah, you know, like Odoo. Yeah, like Odoo, they have like a free plan. You can just use it. And then you've got like Netsuite, which is like you know six figures. And you're just like how? And, and you you know, there's not a lot of people in the e-commerce circle with that experience to share either. Sure. Um, so I think, so yeah, that, what would you recommend for someone looking at that right now? So I think that today there are a lot of tools yeah. that you can just do using Google sheets, right? You don't need, you know, you do a, a, a chat GPT kind of plugin on Google sheets. I can't yeah. remember what it's called, but uh, it was a really cool thing. Something that AI, uh, which work okay. with Google Sheets, which you could do a lot with, right? So you you download yeah. your reports from Amazon and Shopify and other places, um, put it into this thing, and it, it creates demand planning, and you can just say, etc., what you wanted to do. Um, okay. So I don't think you need that un unless you are doing in excess of as a group in excess of say thirty million, forty million in sales. Number one. Yeah. Number two, um, you are unable to find talented, low-cost people in the Philippines or or wherever else you're using these. Yeah. Who are you're willing to throw bodies at a problem? Um, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, because these things, that suit and stuff, is super expensive. 
Or number three yeah. is that you're planning a non-traditional exit, like you're planning a private equity exit or you know, strategic buyer or some variety. Like, for example, if you're selling, I don't know, sheets, uh, are you going to sell to Bed Bath & Beyond or are you going to sell to an Amazon aggregator? You don't need to be a right. system for an aggregator. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, there yeah, are that's the other thing that comes into play is like the an EDI solution. We're on Chewy, and you know they want certain information only over yeah. EDI. But I mean, like we're still so for like that, we're still doing fine with them. Well, um, we we had that problem because we got them to Target, and they want you told through the EDI. So we used I think we used SPS Commerce at the time. Um, okay, I've heard of that one. Yeah, so that was what we used for EDI. Again, kind of this is kind of vintage, right? I'm talking up to 2020, 2021. Uh, there's yeah. a lot that has changed in the last two years. So, um, you know, I'm not giving any uh, current advice if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a good point, man. Um, I'm definitely going to try because I've got OpenAI uh account and i've got you know my api token in google sheets i haven't played around with it because you you have to know the prompts and be specific and i just um you know haven't had a huge use case i just jump over to chat gpt and i think a couple you know, of days do it ago, over there um um you know adam runquist he had a, a video a few days ago uh, about okay about ai tools and stuff so um and he was talking about demand planning I don't think he was talking about demand planning, but okay, demand planning you can do yourself with, um, you know, Google Sheet and uh, say three smart people, uh, you yeah, know, three smart beings. Yeah. Okay. You okay. Know, you don't need that much. You don't need to buy a NetSuite for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And even the integration that NetSuite takes six months. So by then you've lost <laughs> yeah. demand planning, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to uh, to get. I, I think we're like getting wrapped up in it. This idea of having it, and we really don't need it. I, I don't. I don't think we need it. We have a fractional CFO, um, yeah. and he wants us to just use QuickBooks. Um, he wants us to move over to QuickBooks, and and he said that can do demand planning pretty well because you see your data very well, um, and of course you can take that out and do other stuff with it. I'm not um, sure about demand planning on QuickBooks, but demand planning is a lot of it is gut feel, right? As to what yeah. you perform last. I mean, even with you're not going to get like a magic number come out in NetSuite that says buy right. this on this date. Yet yeah, it's just not that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not. That. And there's always external factors too, sure. right? That are gonna things you can't plan for suspensions, delistings, uh, you know. The whole nine yards, yeah. getting, losing yeah. your, uh, you know, bestseller tag, coming back. You know, you never know. There's so much. Yeah. Lost the buy box, got the buy box, the buy box, the buy box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's always something coming up. There's man. always something. Um, yeah. So you guys, so you said you, okay. So you guys ended up going to NetSuite. What did you guys use before that? Just, just Excel. Did you guys use any of like the, just Excel? Okay. Just Excel. Yeah, just Excel. <laughs> Just um, lots of Excel, and yeah, uh, and not very smart people using the Excel, right? So, okay, okay. Uh, but eventually, I mean, we had to hire a, a full time guy who was the the NetSuite administrator. Um, okay, and I think she was like 120 or something. It wasn't wow. cheap. It wasn't cheap. Yeah. Um, but and he was supposed to lead the the thing, so. But that's one of the things that the private equity guys liked about it, right? Okay. Um, so, which maybe gave us a better valuation as well. I'm not sure how much of a better valuation, but... Yeah, it probably taps it because they're probably using it, right? They're probably using it yeah. or something that can like fit very you know nice and easy to their system. Yeah, because these guys buy... You know, we were a minor business that they purchased, but then... They were building a platform. So they were buying a bunch of these twenty, thirty, fifty million dollar brands, putting it into yeah. a platform, making it a, a hundred and fifty, two hundred, five hundred million dollar company, and they'll flip it on in five years. That's their model. Okay. Okay. So they were using that suite and 
um, yeah, so it was good for them as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I think we got a better valuation. We got a much better yeah. valuation uh, with the private equity guys than um, even the aggregators at the time. Right. right. So, um, yeah, I think it helped. That's good info, man. You know, I think uh, it's it's nice to hear from someone who's done it, uh, you know, and been through it because we're kind of on a similar path of, you know, we've acquired two brands recently, smaller one. Well, one was kind of bigger, but a smaller one. And, you know, it, it's hectic to like integrate a company. You know, we've got this terrible looking spreadsheet with passwords on it and checklists and um I mean, it's freaking messy. Man. I remember that. <laughs> so, <laughs> the password Excel cheat. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. With all so the POs eventually... on it, right? All the POs yeah. going back to when you first started the business. That is... <laughs> yep. Yeah, imagine and when I came in to work with um, these guys, which I honestly think this is even worse, um, is they had a lot of like their inventory data just in third-party tools. So they didn't even have a spreadsheet of like all their inventory weights and dims and, you know, vendors and all that stuff and cost of goods. Um, so when I came to work with my, my, who's my partner now, I was like, man, guys, like you got to start having like a master file in a spreadsheet, uh, you know, as a backup. Um, I think that's super important is to have your own data, even if it's just sitting in Google Sheets Absolutely. somewhere or Excel. So, well, Excel on your computer and on Google Sheets and in your yeah. OneDrive file, you know, whatever. It's, yeah. It needs to be a couple of places and it needs to be updated. Yeah. So important. Yeah, and as you scale, that stuff gets important, man. Yeah, I mean, I've seen businesses that um, get high at a certain point in, you're 2019 or so, I said, oh, I'll go out and buy a few Amazon brands and try and do my own thing. Um, and some of these brands, two, three million in annual sales, they don't understand their cogs. They don't know what yeah. their, um, you know, what anything costs. They're like, oh, I just have been doing averages. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just wild, you know? Um, yeah. But then you think of it like, when you were doing sort of one, two million in sales, you were probably just, you know, finger in the air guessing, right? Definitely. Yeah. So there's an element yeah, of it, a lot of us. Yeah. And Amazon take, I know for me, man, it just, you know, one day you're, you look at your account and you're like, whoa, I did like $10,000 in sales today. It's like, I don't know what to do with all this <laughs> right now. Um, and that's how it was for me because I didn't have the education like you. I, uh, I just went through my Amazon. <laughs> my education meant nothing. Honestly, I've never used it. It was yeah. something that I was kind of forced into by my parents, but never actually used my education. But uh, in the early days, I used to love, you know, receiving notifications that, oh, sales yeah. happen, sales. And at a certain point, I'm like, I got to switch this off because it wouldn't stop yes. singing, you know? I mean, one of our yeah. things we were doing two thousand units a day, right at twenty five dollars a pop. So um, it's just uh, it was fun times, that's for sure. It's yeah. a very different yeah. marketplace today. Yeah, definitely. And you need people who understand your business, who've been there. Yeah, um, and who can help. You know, it's not just people out to get you. That's the way I've. Yeah, that's how I felt about it. Right, where people were constantly trying to sell crap to me that I didn't need. And uh, yeah, that just really was awkward. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I'm trying to build something that's the opposite of that. I hope someone right. Is, you know, we're insuring e-commerce. Right? I've got it on my heart. Right, so that's yeah, it. yeah. It's nice to be. It, it. I think that was part of what I felt when I met Mike at the event too. Like, here's something people have to get. They're mandated to get it. And here's these guys like being cool about it and doing it differently. Uh, it just completely changes the whole experience. Yeah. I mean, being out, out of pocket up front or getting premium financing. I saw a quote yesterday, 25% on top of your insurance premium for premium financing, just so you can pay it monthly. 
that's just wild, right? Yeah. And we are natively monthly bear. So we just, you know, send you an invoice, charge a card on file, your sales go up, your premium goes up marginally, your sales come down, whatever. You know, po- container is stuck in the port of Long Beach. You don't have inventory. You're, uh, you know, suspended, whatever. Your premium just drops down to nothing, right? So that is what we're trying to do. Build something that the community can get behind and appreciate. And, you know, yeah. That's nice, man. Well, I'm excited to see you guys, uh, you know, navigate the e-commerce world more, get involved with some of the groups. Um, you know, I think, man, I think you you got to come to an MDS event. Like you would fit in so well there. And uh, I think you'd have a really good time. Yeah. Um, they're was, different, man. I was there at the Barcelona event. That was really cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was Awesome. Sure. I was not there. Yeah, I wasn't at that one. I'm usually always at the events, man, but I was not there. I was in it was Barcelona. my daughter's first day of school. Awesome. How was it? Yeah. It was great, man. She was so excited, uh, you know, going in there. She's She's been doing really good with school, so Fantastic. I'm, I'm glad I made it. Fantastic. Well, that's more important than being at the yeah. this event in Barcelona. Uh, but yeah, I was there at, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the bar in New York, um, where I did uh, That was a cool one as well. This this year? Yeah. You were there? Yeah. Oh, man. I, yeah, okay. I didn't meet you. Um, I forget the name. Was it Sunday or Monday night? Um, Sunday night. The first night, it was kind of small, and then Monday night, it was a little bigger. The tiny bar on Sunday night. Yeah. Yeah, that place. That, that place was cool. It like, uh, it was so cool. It, it, there was, they, there was a bathtub in the middle. That was so awesome. Bathtub yeah. gin. That's what it was called. Bathtub gin. Yeah. Yes. Bathtub gin. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. That's so good. That oh, good yeah. I'm bummed I didn't see you there, man. I know, um, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope to see you guys out, out at the next one. We've sure. got the Miami event coming up and then Inspire in Vegas. Yeah. I think that one's in like, uh, that's early March. And then the summit is in Denver this year. Uh, that's like August, I think. Um, so yeah, we got some good stuff lined up, man. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you out there. Yeah, I think we'll be there at all of them. So yeah. Okay. Really please. All Thank right, you, man. Nick. Yeah, you got it, man. It was great chatting with you, and um, you know maybe we'll uh, we'll bring you on again if there's ever some interest on some CFO specific stuff. You know, I think that would be a great way for you to add value. Um, I think that's a great way too, man, to try and get on a call like inside of MDS. Yep. If you want to come in there as like a CFO, um, offer some some value that way and and then let them know that you're with a Sureful. You know, I think it's just a great way to to give and get value sure. that way. Um, yeah. So that's a good idea within in the group because they do weekly mogul calls is what they call them inside of the group and um, always some good speakers on there. And, and there's usually like 30 to 50 members that hop on usually. Um, so yeah, I think that would be good, man. And, uh, thanks. I learned a lot from you today. I really did. We're, we're dealing with this, you know, this ERP situation and managing our own data and, you know, demand planning and all that stuff. So, um, you know, for some reason I didn't even think about trying to do it with a spreadsheet and chat GPT. So it works. If it works, why not do it? Right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, it was really nice meeting you, Mike, and uh, we'll speak soon. Yeah. Yep. Good chatting. Likewise. Take care.